I gotta say, the future remains bright. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we're headed to the world of Last Epoch. The good old developers from 11th Hour Games continue to give us little teases about what is coming for their next update 0.8.2. But on top of that they are sprinkling in some other information about the future of the game that I bet you don't know about. As always I will share my thoughts, please feel free to share yours in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to support smaller channels. All right, let's jump right into this. Let's start with likely the information you already know. Right now I'm on Steam looking at the early access forecast for Last Epoch. Now all things considered, if everything in these four phases was complete, technically we should get Last Epoch 1.0, the full release of this game. Now if you've been following this, we have completed phase one, we have completed phase two, and we're kind of in phase three, four. The 11th hour games bounces between the two, and this has not been updated since January 11th, so we've gotten tooltip DPS. This has been completed with 0.8.1. Now, the biggest feature that continues to be asked for for this game is in phase three, and that is multiplayer. We want to play with our friends. Of course, it's an ARPG. So we know that multiplayer is coming to this game. There's also multiple end game systems that are going to be added. We already have the monolith with its timelines and being able to empower timelines. And they just added three new islands. So that is good. But we're also going to get an end game system gates of memoriam, which we don't know what that is. We're going to be getting lost memories. And let me read you what lost memories is just as far as what they were thinking when they initially put this in. Lost memories are game features which are stories of individuals from world-shattering champions to lonely orphans. These lost memories can be found in places that are important to the story of these individuals and can be assembled to gain unique benefits. I have no idea what that means, okay? But lost memories is coming. Maybe it's something in the campaign. Maybe it's you're running an echo and you come across a lost memory and it takes you somewhere else, right? So that is supposed to be coming. In phase four, we're supposed to be getting an entirely new chapter. We're getting the last three classes, which is the Rune Master, Warlock, and Falconeer. Most people I know really want to play the Falconeer. That is basically the pet class for the Rogue, and they're going to use Ballistas. It's going to be a lot of fun. I want the Warlock. I want the Warlock. And like, I got a poison build ready for it, okay? Then we're gonna have the trading system, the Bazaar. Now the Bazaar is actually going to be a hub. Now this is how I envision it. End game, when you're playing with friends, it'll be like meet at the Bazaar at, you know, 7 p.m. We can look at each other's gear, you can trade, you can maybe look at like the auction house for this game. It's going to be the main meetup point for end game progression or multiplayer and of course all trading so the bazaar is coming on top of that we're getting another end game system epochs call we're getting legendary items we just got tooltip dps and then we're getting the eternity cash oh i've never heard of the eternity cash this is something really cool let me read that for you as well by placing an item within the Eternity Cache, along with certain rare materials, a player may return to the same cache hundreds or even thousands of years later to, result to retrieve the resulting synthesis. If you haven't played Last Epoch, it's like you jump different timelines, so you jump different eras. You're fighting dinosaurs and you're fighting knights and skeletons, so the idea is if when you come across an Eternity Cache, you could potentially get something really good, but it's open, so you gotta defend it, and you might have to fight, so kind of a cool system. So right now we already have the arena, we already have the monolith of fate with timelines and echoes, and we're gonna be getting potentially four other endgame systems. So again, I always tell people, don't sleep on Last Epoch. Everyone, you always hear about 
D4. You always hear about Path of Exile 2. This game will be a contender once it is finalized, okay? So that's the stuff you likely already know. Now let's talk about some information that is not on this early access forecast, starting with UI improvements. Now this was dropped a day ago, and it's honestly something that I didn't see coming. I thought the UI for this game was pretty good, but of course it can always be better. So the first thing they're doing is they're going to update the style of the UI. So on here, this little bar right here is now going to be where your ward is at. Normally your ward like takes over your life and then like slowly goes down until it turns red again. Well, now you're going to have an individual bar for your ward. And then obviously you can see on here all the different little styling and stuff they are doing. Um, it looks really, really good. I like it. Like I said, I wish I could have no UI, but that looks good. You got the ward display. Here's kind of an idea of how it's going to look. Looks clean. There's going to be new controller variants. All we care about is PC. I guess maybe you can use a controller with your PC, but people that want to use a controller, there's going to be a new variant. New world map. Let's see, can I make this bigger? Look at that. Get the little squid in there. I mean, it looks good. No nobody's asking for this stuff, but obviously it's the details, right? Just makes the game look that much more clean. They're refining it. They're polishing it. I like it. All right, go away. Removing the quest window. Good. I do not want that up there. New class passives window. We're going to have to see what that looks like and loot label optimization. In patch 0.8.2, we'll be updating the organization of loot labels to be more efficient. We do not anticipate any perceivable changes to this behavior. This change will be most pronounced when a large number of loot labels are presented on the screen close together. To offer an example, when there are 140 items on the ground close together, the update will cause their loot labels to take approximately 85% less frame time, heavily improving their impact on frame rates. In other words, the process will be exactly approximately five to six times faster. I like it, okay? So all the stuff I just read to you, plus UI improvements, but we're not done there. I think it was four or five days ago, a developer from 11th Hour Games did a stream. And during that stream, he was taking questions. And during that stream, I was taking notes from his answers. Let's log into the game for a second. We're in, we're starting off with Primalist. Right now I'm logged into my Shaman. And looking at him, I haven't played this character in a while. It looks like he's going to need some gear. Anyways, the information that I am about to bestow upon you, I learned during the live stream and some of its little tidbits of information and some of it is like, that is going to be cool. All right, let's take a look at skills. Now, kind of when they dropped this new layout, it obviously cleaned it up, but it also gave us an outlook into how many skills they're likely going to give us before we get the 1.0 launch. Now, if you notice on here, Primalist has five, 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 four. Four. Now that wouldn't be fair if the Beastmaster got five skills, but the Shaman and the Druid only got four. He talked about potentially two new skills coming in, and that's not going to be that there's going to be more than that coming. I think it's going to come all the way down here, which would basically be seven skills per specialization. How I know this is if when you logged in to the Void Knight, or you look at the Void Knight specialization, it already has six skills. And you know it's got to be perfectly balanced. So if the Void Knight already has six skills, that means that the Beastmaster, Shaman, and Druid will likely be getting two skills, two skills, and a skill. Okay, I don't know that for sure, but I would think it is going to be even. I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to be. Anyways, okay. They didn't say anything really about the Beastmaster, okay? They just said that the Primalist is one of the earliest classes, so they plan on reworking a lot of it. But for the Shaman, okay, right here in this empty spot, they said, ooh, this is a perfect spot up here for another totem. An elemental totem. And that's all the information we got. So the next skill coming for the Shaman is going to be a totem. Now, through process of elimination, you've already got a Summon Storm Totem. 
that's lightning and can be turned into cold. You've already got a Frenzy Totem, and you've already got a Summon Thorn Totem, which shoots and also can be turned into cold. So based upon process of elimination, I'm not 100% sure, but this will likely be a Flame Totem. And they love Diablo too, so maybe it'll be like, you know, Hydra to them. I don't know. I'm pretty sure a Flame Totem is coming right here for the Shaman. The other thing they talked about is the Druid is going to have three different forms. So you've already got Spriggan form, you've already got Werebear form, but there's going to be another form coming to this class. Now the Spriggan obviously shoots, and the Werebear is a tank. So again, through process of elimination during this live stream, we know it is going to be a damage dealing melee class. On top of that, they always reference Diablo 2. Diablo 2 had a werebear, and they also had a wolf. I don't know if it's going to be a wolf, but it's going to be some kind of damage dealing melee class. Now think about this for a second. A werebear who's your tank, and let's just say a wolf, which is going to do high levels of damage. You can technically have both of those on your skill bar. Which means if you're playing with friends, if you need to tank, if you're surrounded by enemies, if you're about to die, you could change into your bear. Fend everything off, and then when you're finally regrouped, switch back into your wolf, and now you're back slaughtering stuff again. And those two skills, or forms, would likely use the same gear. Melee, you can run them both physical, you could run them both fire, you could run them cold, elemental. So you can use the same gear for potentially the same two forms. I love that. And I love that idea. And technically, I've never played a druid in this game, but I think I'm going to have to. Last little tidbit on Primalist before we switch over to Sentinel, and that is that they are going to completely remake, or there's going to be a new model for Werebear. I think they're going to make it look really, really cool. So imagine like what they did with Abomination, but with a bear. Yes. Now logged in to the Sentinel. Now something that kept getting brought up during the live stream was when are we going to get a tree for stances? And I've heard this over and over and over again. I've also heard, heard rumor that stances are going away because they don't really work within the game. And you've got your armor stance and then you've got your damage stance, right? And the developer was talking about how he has personally worked on making a skill tree for the stances, and it is very, very hard to do. It was the same thing that happened when they were working on auras. So the Sentinel or the Paladin has Holy Aura. They had multiple auras, and they couldn't figure it out. So they combined all the auras together, and then you can basically take, you know, however you want on the skill tree, to make that aura what you want. Now he said that's likely what is going to happen with stances or maybe, and it's he kind, I wanna say he kind of alluded to this. I guess I'm reaching just a little bit. Possibly stances make their way over to the actual passive tree where like maybe if you get hit, it triggers a stance or something along those lines. But he said there are plans for stances in the game which means they are not being removed. They're just going to be reworked. 11th hour games really does not want skills on your action bar that you aren't using. So if I have a stance and I have an aura, those are just two active skills that you don't really use. They just sit there on the bar. That is not what they want. That's kind of why they probably haven't been working on stances, because they don't really know what to do with them. But again, there is a plan. Still not done. I've got my phone in my other hand, and I'm going to read you through my notes about the future of this game. Stuff you might not know. See, I'm a good note taker, a good student. Okay, ready? New AI for summons. When I read this, my mind just starts to explode, thinking about potentially my Fire Necro getting that much better. Now, they've already implemented some of the new AI in the Wolf for the Primalist, and people are already saying they notice a difference. Like, the summon reacts and works a lot better instead of, you know, running aimlessly around. So, new AI for summons is coming. The developer talked about how true endgame bosses are in the works. 
but you have to work on the lore. You just can't throw in a boss and it doesn't mean anything really to the story. And the example he gave is like a boss like the Shaper in PoE. So you really have to, you know, min max your character to make sure you can take down that true end game boss. He said the reason why they haven't implemented it right now, because really that's for the, you know, the 1% of people that want to do that. So they're working on the core content. True end game bosses is in the works. Big performance improvements just around optimization. He made a joke saying that we keep promising it over and over again. They are in the works as far as visuals, frame rates, and polish. So that is coming. Just be patient. Someone asked him about an endgame system that's like delving in PoE. And he said they just don't want to copy that system, but they love that system. And one of the endgames we are going to be very happy because it will likely be an endless dungeon style run like delving in PoE, which is awesome. So you'll have the arena where you can take on constant, constant waves, and then you'll be able to kind of delve or whatever Last Epoch puts their spin on it for an endgame system. That was awesome. That made me very, very excited. I like that. We're still not done. I've still got three things. Now, this one's not really big. They're talking about, again, redoing what the death or what happens when you die on the monolith. Do you get set back? How many different runs? Like, they're always quoting Diablo 2, which I love. I've always said this could potentially be the true successor to Diablo 2. But in Diablo 2, you can lose experience. They're talking about maybe that would happen if you died. It doesn't hurt your character as far as making you weaker, but obviously you got to be careful because you don't want to stunt your progression. So what happens when you die? Last two things. Socketed items are likely coming in the future. So potentially an affix could roll, or one of your affixes would be a socket, and then obviously there would be materials for that socket. Or maybe you'd have your four affixes and you'd have a socketed item. They're working on that, they're testing it, they're talking about it. So sockets will likely be coming in the future for Last Epoch. Last and not least, hidden zones do exist in this game. And he talked about how he loved the cow level from Diablo 2. And there's more to come. Right now they exist in the game to show that there are hidden areas in the game. And there'll be more to it later on, which makes me think what the, the Eternity Cache or whatever it's called. Maybe you got to find the hidden zone to find the cache to put your stuff in for it to synthesize. Maybe those two things go together. I don't know. Continue to say it. The future is bright for Last Epoch. I just want them to nail multiplayer. Obviously, there's going to be bugs. There's going to be performance. You're going to have three people on a team all running fire necro wraiths. And how are the frames going to look? You know, this is an early access game. All that stuff's going to happen. But continue to optimize. Continue to polish. You guys are on the right track with all of this stuff. And I believe, I truly believe, you'll be able to get this game out quicker than D4, quicker than PoE2. Establish your fan base so that they can't take it away. All right. That's all I got today. I want to know what you're most excited about. Did you learn anything today? Am I just reciting old information because I don't follow it close enough? Let me know in the comment section below. If you have not joined the official Action RPG Discord, please do so. Approaching 700 members, great conversations every day. The idea is to create a gaming community that can jump from game to game together so you never start the server alone. Link for that Discord is in the description. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay home, stay safe. Do not forget to join the official Action RPG Discord. Aaron, out. <laughs>